I'm going to show you how to create dynamic drop-down lists and other types of dynamic content in Be Realize Automation 8. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Brian Watchers from Vavork. If this is your first time here and you want to learn about automating, programming, and monitoring in VMware environments, you're in the right place. Start now by subscribing and click the bell so that you don't miss a thing. Before we begin, let me point out that there's a playlist up here for all eight videos in this video series. And additionally, let me point out that this video series is not just applicable to VMware vRealize Automation 8, it's also applicable to VMware vRealize Automation Cloud. Okay, so it's time to dive in. Let's go to the lab environment and let me show you what we're gonna be doing. Welcome to the lab environment. As you can see, I'm logged into vRealize Automation 8, and I'm currently looking at all the deployments of machines that I've deployed in vRealize Automation, but there's a sad face here. I haven't actually deployed anything yet. So let's actually go to the Catalog tab, and as you can see here, I've set up vRealize Automation to have one blueprint that my users can request deployments from. Now, I'll show you more details about this blueprint later on, but essentially this blueprint is going to deploy one vSphere virtual machine. So let's click on this request button here. Actually, it's a link. We'll click there. And as you can see, when the user requests a deployment from this blueprint, it asks them some questions such as, what do we want to call this deployment? We may end up with a bunch of different deployments, so we better give this one a good name. Uh, let's call this one MyVM. And additionally, the users are allowed to type a description so that perhaps they'll know later on what this blueprint, excuse me, what this deployment was for. This blueprint may actually have multiple versions. In this case, there's only one. Later on, I'll show you how those versions work. And additionally, later on, I'll explain to you what these projects are. But what I really want to show you here is this additional thing that I've added to this blueprint. The first four questions, the version, the deployment name, description, and project, those are all standard questions that are asked every time a user does a deployment from the service catalog. But this size question that we're being asked here is something that I've added to the form that the user sees when they make a request from this blueprint. In other words, what I've done is I've created a custom form in which this size field here is a drop-down list that gives the user the choice of what size machine they have. Do you want a small VM? Do you want a medium-sized VM or a large-sized VM? Now, obviously, I can uh, have different choices there. If I wanted to have tiny and extra large, I could do that. But this list here is quite possibly going to be a statically defined list. It's not going to change. The company who's deployed VRI's automation here has decided to keep things simple. They don't have to. They could give the users a choice over exactly how many CPUs, how much memory, and so forth in each machine. But oftentimes, customers want to do uh, what's known as t-shirt sizing of their machines that they're deploying. So here, we just have small, medium, large, and that's probably not going to change. On the other hand, sometimes the things that we ask our users in these custom, custom forms need to be more dynamic. For instance, if I wanted to, I could have a drop-down list that allowed the user to specify which data store they wanted their VM deployed into. Now, I know not everyone's going to be comfortable giving the users that much control, but if I did want to do that, I could have a drop-down list that listed all of our data stores. But chances are there are going to be times when I need to filter that list of data stores. For instance, I might want to dynamically filter that list of data stores, filter the dropdown list, so that instead of listing all the data stores, maybe we should only show the data stores that have at least 15% free space. Or perhaps we only want to show data stores to certain users and dynamically display in the dropdown list other data stores for users perhaps in another department. So there are various things like this. Those are just a few simple examples, but there are various things that you're going to want to do in your custom forms 
to make the custom forms more dynamic. So that's what this video series is all about, is to show you how to take advantage, not just of the custom form designer in V-Rise Automation, but also how to use its dynamic capabilities. So let's continue onwards here and see how this all works. If you're already familiar with V-Rise Automation 8 and know how to use the custom form designer, but your drop-down lists only have statically defined choices, if you're watching this video because you want to learn how to create dynamic drop-down lists where the choices are dynamically populated into that drop-down list, I'm going to be showing you how to do that in video number six. Now, if you're watching this video when it first drops, video number six won't be out yet. So you're going to want to make certain to subscribe and click the notification bell icon in YouTube so that you'll be notified as these videos come out. And again, the video you would want to jump to is video number six. But for the rest of you, rather than just plunge right into the deep end, I wanted to show you the steps involved in getting to the point where we can use the custom form designer. So let's get started by, first of all, logging into vRealize Automation. As you can see, I've already brought up a web browser. In my case, I happen to be using Chrome, but vRealize Automation supports other browsers. I'm gonna to go to this bookmark that I've defined here that's gonna take me to the login prompt for vRealize Automation and I'll click on the button here to go to the login page itself. And I'm gonna log in as an account that's an administrator account. You don't have to necessarily be an administrator to do the things I'm doing here, but I'm gonna log in as an administrator account that I've intentionally set up to have access to various parts of vRealize Automation 8 that I need to have access to to do what we're trying to do. So I'm gonna click sign in. And as you can see, when we log into vRealize Automation 8, here it comes, what we'll see to begin with is a list of services in vRealize Automation 8. Now I'll be talking about these services in various videos coming out. Again, subscribe and click the notification bell button so that you'll see them coming out. But for right now, we're concerned with three of these services. We're going to be interested in Cloud Assembly, Service Broker, and orchestrator. And I'll begin by logging into Cloud Assembly. I'll explain in a moment what Cloud Assembly is, but here I am logged into Cloud Assembly. Now there are actually ways of flip-flopping between the different services. Uh, I happen to uh, prefer the technique that I'm gonna show you here. I'm going to actually open up another tab and I'm gonna go to that same URL let me go here again. Uh, you'll notice I get to the same prompt. I'll click and go to the login page again. But since I'm already logged in, it's going to take me right to the list of services. So I'm going to start that second service, the service broker. And I'll open up a third tab. And in that third tab, I'm going to go to the login page again. So I'll click on go to login page. But again, I'm already logged in, so I can just jump straight to the third service I'm interested in here, which is Orchestrator. And as you can see, I'm now logged in in these three different tabs into Cloud Assembly, Service Broker, and Orchestrator. Join me in the next video where I'll explain the three services we just logged into and we'll create our first blueprint.